cartoons! It's another beautiful day, and baby fish muggles and joy are swimming carefree and happy in the vast blue ocean. What a great day it's been, muggles! And it's only getting started. You got that right, Joy, and there's no one I'd rather spend it with than you. Oh, thanks, buddy. And here is the best teacher in the whole wide reef. Professor Shark, who, despite Muggles and Joy's day of adventuring, has a big mission waiting for them. Muggles, Joy, I'm glad you're back. We have a dilemma. What's that? Like, ick? No, it's not ick, Muggles. A dilemma is a situation wherein a difficult decision must be made. Oh, no. What's going on, Professor Shark? Well, Button has made Mr. Sushi feel terrible. I think poor Mr. Sushi could use some friendly cheer, if you two don't mind. We'd be happy to help. Thanks for thinking of us, Professor. Are you kidding? You two fish are the cheeriest we have here in the reef. You can bring rays of sunshine to the gloomiest day. Hmm, we should be therapists. Therapist for Jesus. I wonder if that pays well. I'm sure it would pay your soul just fine, Muggles. Uh, but right now, what we need most is to cheer up our old friend, Mr. Sushi. We are on it, Professor. Yeah, you can count on us. Away we go, Joy. Muggles and Joy swim until they find their friend Mr. Sushi and see why Button made him feel bad. There he is! Hey, Mr. Sushi, how's it going? It's a knot. How are you guys? Aw, uh, Mr. Sushi? What's wrong? A button said something mean to me. Made me feel pretty bad. I saw we were friends. You are friends, Mr. Sushi. Sometimes friends say things they don't mean. Yeah. I bet Button didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I bet he didn't even think it'd make you feel bad. He said I was a just a dumb rolled up a soggy rice. Oh my, that does not sound very nice, Mr. Sushi. Yeah, that's not very kind at all, Mr. Sushi. I feel bad just hearing it. See? I don't know what I did to deserve that. Well, well, I kind of do. What do you mean, Mr. Sushi? I sort of caught a ride on Button's tail when he was out swimming earlier. I was uninvited. Oh. I guess I was too heavy for him. He sunk to the bottom while he bumped his nose on a coral. Ouch. But you probably had a good reason why you did that, right, Mr. Sushi? Well, uh, I was uh, tired and I didn't want to uh, swim. And I had some place to be. Hmm, being in a rush and being lazy, not a very good reason to jump on a friend's tail. Yeah, no, not a good one. I know, I know. I uh, apologize all day, but he wasn't having any of it. Hey, Muggles, why don't we go talk to Button? He can't stay upset forever. I bet he comes around. Oh, I, I am afraid to. He didn't want to talk at all the way he swam off. But it's been a little while. I bet Joy's right and he's calmed down considerably. Let's go find him. Let's go. Muggles and Joy find Button, who's still surly from being hopped like a train. Hi, Button. How's it going? Uh, been better. 
That big bowl of rice, Mr. Sushi, hitched a ride on me like a plankton. Well, I'm sure he had a good reason, right? Yeah, he was lazy and used me like a city bus. Oh, Button, I know that couldn't have felt very good. But Mr. Sushi didn't mean it. Pshaw! He treated me like some kind of chum line. She's right, Button, and we heard what you said to Mr. Sushi. It made him feel terrible. I think he should feel terrible after what he did to me. I mean, I bumped my nose on a coral. It hurt. I know. But he still wants to be your friend. Yeah, he should have thought of that before he rode my tail like a barnacle, I say. You know how goofy I must have looked to all my friends? Probably not as goofy as Mr. Sushi looked. He's so dumb sometimes. I don't know why we are even friends. Ugh. Button, the book of Matthew tells us that Jesus said, but I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Oh, Jesus said that? He did. And in the Bible's Ephesians 4.29, the Apostle Paul wrote, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Using our voices for good, as opposed to making those around us feel bad, is kind of a big thing with Jesus. Hmm, I, I, I don't want to go against the teachings of Jesus. I just want Mr. Sushi to feel bad about what he did. But wanting to make Mr. Sushi feel bad does go against Jesus' teachings, Button. Yeah, it's one thing to get crabby because someone unintentionally hurt us, but it's another thing to attack them because of it. Sometimes our words can hurt much worse than a barnacle on a tail. And Mr. Sushi's hurt, Button. He misses his friend and feels bad about what happened today. You might think about forgiving him. After all, isn't it better to have a good friend who isn't perfect? None of us are. Then a perfect enemy? You're right. I, I, I don't want to disappoint Jesus or lose my friend. Can I apologize to Mr. Sushi? Yes! Muggles and Joy return to Mr. Sushi, excited to tell him. He still has a friend in Button. Hey, Mr. Sushi, we brought someone to see you. Yeah. Oh, Psst, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Hello again, Mr. Sushi. Button, you're not a man. I was, but you're a good friend, Mr. Sushi. I don't want to lose you over a silly move, like catching a ride on my tail, I say. Really? Really. Besides, oh, it's not like you're that heavy or anything. <laughs> well, I did cause you to sink to the bottom. And bump your nose. All is forgiven and forgotten, my friend. I miss you, Button. I miss you too. Uh, next time you need a lift, just ask, okay? It's not like I'd say no. Okay. Muggles and Joy return to their reef to see Professor Shark and tell him all they've learned about the power of our words, for good and for bad. Muggles, Joy, how did it go? Were you able to find Mr. Sushi? We sure were, Professor, and Button too. Yeah, and they made up. They're the best of friends again. Praise be. You two are my little miracle workers. We just try to serve Jesus as best we can. We don't work miracles, although I do know a mean shell game I can show you. Well, I thank you, little ones, and rest assured, Jesus is extremely extremely grateful for you. You both serve his will so dutifully, and you make our reef a splendid place to live. The pleasure's all ours, Professor Shark. Anytime we're needed, by anyone, we'll be there. Hmm, 
We kind of sound like superheroes. We should come up with a name. Hmm, the Supervins? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> With hearts full of gratitude and love for God, muggles and joy swim out to spread Jesus' word far and wide, wherever the waves carry them. Time to swim, Joy! Let's go, muggles! Onward and outward, always! Yay! It's been a busy day for our little fish, Muggles and Joy. And now they're returning to their reef after a day of collecting lots of fancy corals for their class projects. We sure collected a lot of cool corals today, Joy. The riptide was on our side, Muggles. More like Jesus was on our side. Amen. Let's go see if Professor Shark has any fun tasks for us today. Professor Shark does have a task for our two adventurous fish. And they're about to find out about it right now. Dear noon, Professor Shark. Boy, did we really find a ton of cool corals for our class project today. We sure did. We found so much, I don't know what we'll do with it all. Funny you mention it, my little ones, because our friends Pete and Rosie are having a hard time out there. They've been out since the break of dawn and haven't collected hardly any corals for the class project. They're super sad. Oh, no. Well, we've got more than enough to go around. They should just come back and use some of ours. Yeah, they can share ours if they like. Oh, that's so thoughtful and generous of you both. But if I know Pete and Rosie, they won't feel good about taking your corals. You're right, Professor. Those two really enjoy pulling their own weight around here. Muggles to Joy, if you go meet Pete and Rosie by the open ocean, you might be able to convince them to come back to the reef. They worked so hard to find corals, but sometimes, as it happens in life, things just don't go our way. It's no fault of theirs, mind you, and goodness knows they have nothing to be ashamed of. That sounds like a great idea. Let's go find them. We can let them know how much we appreciate their diligence and bring them back home with us. Yeah! Muggles and Joy find their friends Pete and Rosie, who are tired, empty finned, and very sad. Hey guys, how goes it? Hey Muggles, Joy, mm, not so great. Yeah, it's been better. We've searched all day and haven't come up with any corals for the class project. Professor Shark is going to be so disappointed in us. Oh no, he'll stop liking us, won't he? Huh? There's no need to feel that way, you guys. Professor Shark loves us all equally. Sort of like Jesus does. Whoa, let's not get carried away, Joy. The professor might care unconditionally, but it's not like Jesus' eternal love. You're right, Muggles. But still, there's no shame in asking somebody else for some corals. If you've done all you can do for one day and couldn't catch a break. True, Professor Shark only asks that we try our best and give it our all. The results aren't as important as the attempt. But we want to make the awesomest class project ever on our own and make Professor Shark proud of us. We feel lousy. Yeah, we worked so hard and have nothing to show for it. Pete, that's not true. We all know how hard you guys work to find fun corals for the project. Bring back what you can, then we'll pray, go to bed, and be ready to start a new day. Yes, we will. That sure sounds nice, but we still have some daylight left. It wouldn't be right to head back early when we might still find some corals today. Tell you guys what. Why don't we show you where we collected our corals? We've been very blessed lately, and there might still be enough to give you what you need. Really? You'd do that for us? Of course, we're reef mates, aren't we? Come on, it's this way. Okay! okay. Wow, thanks a bunch, guys! <laughs> yeah, this is awesome! It feels good to see you so happy. It sure does, you know. In a lot of ways, it 
feels better seeing you reef mates have as much of our corals as you need than it did when we found it ourselves. Yeah, it kind of feels better to give than to receive. Better to give too much than too little. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> it's funny how that works. It makes me think of one particular Bible verse, Galatians 6.2, which tells us carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Wow. You know, maybe we should help you guys even more. What do you mean? I mean, we collected so much coral today, we have enough to build a whole new reef. True. That's too much coral for anybody. <laughs> Why don't we share some of what we've collected with you guys? Even a little bit would still be more than you can collect before sundown. Hmm. Why don't we share even more than that? How about we give you guys all that you can carry, too? Really? You would do that? Yes, of course. Reminds me of Hebrews 6.10, which says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. I love the Bible. So many awesome stories and lessons. It's the greatest book ever. Amen to that. Muggles and fish return to their reef to see Professor Shark and tell him all they've learned about giving too much rather than too little. Muggles, enjoy! It's so late! What took you so long? Did you fish get lost? Nope! We went and found Pete and Rosie, like you asked, Professor. Ha! Ah, how wonderful! How did that go? We decided to not just bring Pete and Rosie back home, but to help them collect the corals they weren't finding. Oh? Yes, we gave them ours. A good bit of it, anyway. And they were also able to collect a bunch from the coral reef. They're still collecting so many amazing shapes and colors to be found. The reef we found is full of beautiful colorful coral. My, that certainly was generous of you two. We asked ourselves, what would Jesus want? And the answer was clear. He would want us to give all that we could. Selflessly, without condition. Well, uh, I believe he would, Muggles. So, that's what we did. In Jesus' eyes, it's better to give more than you can spare of a bountiful harvest than to just give a little bit. Well, that's correct, Muggles. Besides, it made Pete and Rosie feel great. And it all ends up in the same place, after all. Our classroom. This has been quite the lesson from above, you two. It sure has. A win for Jesus, a win for our fish friends, and a win for our school. That's what I call a 360-degree win. <laughs> <laughs> With unselfish hearts and boundless love for Jesus, Little Muggles and Joy set out to make the most of another blessed day. Bless you, Joy. Bless you, Muggles. woo <laughs> Join us now as we follow our ever-bustling little fish, Muggles and Joy, as they return to their coral reef after a day spent scouting a new classroom for their ever-moving ocean school. This was fun, Joy! Professor Shark sent us out to find a new reef classroom for our studies. He did, Muggles! And we found a pretty good spot for it, right? Oh, I think Professor Shark will love it! It's got corals! And a big old rock to use as blackboard! Professor Shark eagerly awaits their return! Curious to hear the reports of the morning. Hey, Teach, do we have some news for you? Is that so? Well, let's hear it, Muggles. We think we found a great spot for a new classroom. Just outside Blue Bay, a little beyond the sunken ship, before you reach the deep rock abyss. There's lots of seaweed and sunlight hits the waves just right, and the currents really keep us floating nicely when we swim in place. Oh, that sounds Sounds marvelous, my little ones. But please, always be careful when swimming close to the deep rock abyss. How did you... Hey, what's it with all the pattering around when I'm trying to sleep? You fish need to keep it down. You're not the ordinary creatures in the sea, you know. Excuse me? You roll through the algae beds half the time while we're trying to eat. 
If anybody's interrupting anybody, it's you, Mr. Sushi. Oh, bah. Plus, you interrupted the professor mid-sentence. This is our home, and we share it with you, you spring roll. Hey, I, I ain't no a spring roar. I'm a California roar. I'll have you know. Now, 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 you three calm down. Where is all this conflict coming from? I thought we were all friendly here. So did I. Until you riddle bubble growers start waking me up every five minutes with all that blub, 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 blub. It's obnoxious. I see why the octopi move out of our neck of the reef. You fish are driving all the good sea creatures away. Well, you're smashing all the good algae beds with your big roly-poly body. My big... Why you good? Why you're leaving algae crumbs all over the reef? Well, you are leaving algae crumbs all over the reef. It sticks in my teeth, and it makes it tough to chew my favorite food, a jerryfish. I've lost a quarter pound of rice. I'm a wasting away to being translucent. Well, you're taking bites out of perfectly good algae and plant life while you're chasing jellyfish with your nubby little teeth. You've ruined my ecosystem. You've ruined our ecosystem. Sea creatures, enough. Even if your grievances were valid, this is not the way to go about airing them. You're all just sniping at each other, and that only makes conflict worse. He started it! In your dreams, Beta Brain! Don't talk to my friend that way, roll face! On the bite, invertebrae! Hey, stop! I've heard enough. All three of you, out! But, Professor... I said out! You go work through this amongst yourselves, and don't come back until you've reached a truce, and found some manners. But, Professor- Go! Oh, Lord, grant me strength. Muggles enjoy do as they've been told, but aren't happy about it. Mr. Sushi follows, unwilling to let things lie. Ha! I kicked off your own reef! So the you fish is alright for all the trouble you cause me! Hello! You got kicked off the reef too! Why don't you leave us alone? If you dislike us that much, why do you follow us around? Just go home! Because I can't sleep! You ruin my home! So I ruin yours right back! Maybe I'll just find some chopsticks then. Will that make you leave us alone? Oh, you... Why, you... Be nice, Muggles. Let it go. Let's not make him any more angry. Yeah, I see what you fish are all about. Ruin the landscape with all your sloppery algae eating and around the bubbling. Then eat anyone who doesn't like it. <laughs> Real crass acts. Mr. Sushi, you're the meanest. Ignore him, Muggles. We're moving soon anyway. Oh, thank heaven. Well, my job is done here. Good riddance. I'm looking forward to a good day's sleep. Then Mr. Sushi, he's such a meanie. I didn't know he had such a problem with us. Well, looks like he kept it to himself. And now we find out he dislikes us so much. Hey, look over there. There's Mrs. Wetley. I bet she still likes us. Let's go say hi. Muggles enjoy great Mrs. Wetley, the pink fish. Grateful to be with a friend after their surprise argument. Hey, Mrs. Wedley, what's going on? Not much, Joy. Just catching the jet stream up north to visit my sister at the bay. What's up with you guys? We just got into a bad argument with Mr. Sushi, who apparently doesn't like being our neighbor at all. Oh, that's terrible. I hate to hear that two awesome species aren't getting along. Our underwater world is so beautiful. 
and such a gift from Jesus. I wish everyone would just enjoy it and be as happy as clams. That's a nice thought, but sometimes it's just not possible. Mr. Sushi was even rude to Professor Shark. Muggles, remember, all things are possible through Jesus. We just have to have faith and remember to honor his plan for us. Which is getting under our neighbor's scale, apparently. You'd think Jesus would bear compatible animals in the wild instead of, well, us and sushi. Muggles, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that God's plan is perfect, whether we realize it or not. Well, I'm questioning this one. If this is how it goes, then fish and restaurant food have no business living together. Joy, I'm sorry to hear you guys are having such a problem. But the Bible tells us to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Wow, so it's better for us not to let our emotions get the better of us? It leads to a lot of problems, as you can see. Then what do we do when someone is rude or attacks us for no reason, Mrs. Woodley? There's always a reason, Muggles. You might not be aware of it, but every action has a motivation behind it, no matter how big or small or how impolite. As the book of Matthew tells us, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So, keeping our manners is the best way to deal with problems like these? In Jesus' eyes, yes. As the Bible's first Timothy also tells us, Flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. It says that? Yes, it also says, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snares of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Whoa. Mr. Sushi, we wanted to apologize to you. Yeah, we know we're not your favorite fish right now, but we didn't know we were bothering you that much. We'll be better about dropping our algae. And about blowing bubbles while you're trying to sleep. You might not want to be our friend anymore, but... We like to be polite anyway. And we'd like to invite you to our new reforming. Just as soon as we move in. Really? 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 Wow! I would like to apologize for being so harsh earlier. I was just tired and cranky. You fish didn't deserve that. How about we start off a new fin, huh? Or a new seaweed. Okay. We'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> Muggles and Joy gingerly swim back to their reef to see Professor Shark and tell him all they've learned about manners and common courtesies. Well, look who's back. Did you fish learn anything about manners while you were away? We did, Professor, and we apologize for being rude earlier. We were thinking, and our anger wasn't only an insult to you, but to Jesus as well, who wants better for us. We settled down and made peace with Mr. Sushi, and he'll be coming to our new reef warming. Oh? That's presuming we have a new reef to move into. We've been meaning to talk to you about that, Professor. We think we found a spot you'll love. Really? Really? Uh, 
you never fail to surprise me, little ones. Never, ever. Mindful of their manners and full of love for Jesus, little muggles and Joy set out to be the best little fish they can be. I love you, Joy. I love you, muggles. And God, too. Woohoo! <laughs> It's another beautiful day in the ocean, and little fish Muggles and Joy are swimming home to their reef after a day of worship at Fish Church. Muggles, you know I love foraging for algae, but I really love starting the day with a gathering to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus. Me too, Joy. There's nothing more amazing than spending time looking inward, focusing on our relationship with him, and all the ways that we might better serve him. Agreed. Plus, our fish church sure is an awesome place to pray. And play. The prayer coral nooks are a nice touch. I could spend all day in those. I know. So relaxing. Muggles enjoys beloved Professor Shark awaits his fish's daily visit, where he goes over the state of the reef and the goals for the day. Muggles, Joy, did you have a good time at underwater worship? Always, Professor Shark. We love clearing our thoughts and giving our mind over to Jesus for a while. It makes us feel closer to him and makes our mission and goals clearer. Well, that's wonderful. Worship is always my favorite time when I was your age. Do you miss it, Professor? I know it's a lot of work teaching all the little fish of this reef. Do you ever want to go back to the simpler days? When you had more time to dedicate to Jesus? Hmm, uh, you know, I do sometimes. My youth was carefree. We, we learned so much so fast. And before I knew it, I was a professor with my own students to look after. <laughs> it seems like it went by in the blink of an eye. A blink of an eye? What's that? Hey, never mind, Muggles. Sometimes I forget. Only us sharks have membranes that cover our eyes. <laughs> but you little fish don't blink or even close your eyes ever. Oh, huh. I never even thought about it. Funny how we're designed so differently sometimes. That it is. Say, well, let me ask you two. Is there any fish in the open ocean who you might think benefit from our worship services? Hmm, I think all the fish we know are there, Professor. Well, that's just it, Muggles. Our services aren't confined strictly to fish. Anyone and everything is welcome to worship Jesus with us. If you know any sea creature who may be interested or just in need of some prayer time, tell them about us or just bring them. Our worship reef is always open. Wow! You mean the whole ocean can come and worship with us? That's exactly what I mean, Joy. Anytime. Jesus' door is always open, and so is ours. Awesome. Hmm, do we know anyone who could use some prayer time, Joy? How about Button? Button's a great pick. And what about Bitsy, too? Yeah. Hey, they'd make a great pair of friends, wouldn't they? Oh, they sure would. You know, come to think of it, Many friends have met through worshiping Jesus. Well, that's true, Muggles. What better place to meet a great pal than at a worship gathering? I never thought of that. Maybe next time we go to Fish Church, we can make a few new friends. Yeah. Wait, we are friends with everybody who comes to Fish Church already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> never mind. That's what happens at Fish Church. Everybody becomes a fast friend. Now you can find new sea creatures for our worship services, so you can make more friends. Right. I think Button and Bitsy are two wonderful choices. You two go find them in the sea and tell them all about it. They're welcome to join us any time they like. Cool, here we go. 
Come on, Joy. Let's go. Uh, have fun. Muggles and Joy fly to find their friend Button and tell him all about their worship services. Hey, Button. How are you? Uh, pretty good, Muggles. Just getting some spins in today. Working out in the open ocean, I say. That's awesome. You ever consider working out your soul? My uh, soul? Uh, where is that exactly? <laughs> Have you ever thought about taking a load off and sitting down for a little? Sitting? Uh, not really. But, but sometimes you should take a break between diving and rising. Do you ever pray? Pray? No, I'm thinking of going vegetarian, honestly. Your reef's algae looks delicious, by the way. <laughs> no, not pray. Pray. It's a personal and private request for help or admission of thanks to Jesus. It can be performed alone or in a group of like-minded sea creatures. Silently or out loud? Hmm, I bet it sounds interesting. It is interesting and relaxing. You should come with us sometime. Our reef holds prayer worship services a couple times a week. And then there's all that yummy algae, of course. Oh, thanks. I love being invited to do new things. Well, look. Why don't you join us for worship tomorrow morning and see how you like it? If you enjoy it, you can come every morning. Uh, how much does it cost to get in? Nothing. Prayer's always free. Yeah, prayer is always free because it's always with you. Worship is just like exercising a muscle. All right. Say, do you know anyone else who might like to come along and join us? Our reef's open for any interested creatures, anytime. Hmm. Let me think. What about Bitsy? She'd probably love to come hang out. Oh, yeah! Bitsy! I like her a lot. We meet when we go up for air all the time. What a great idea! We'll go find her and let her know. See you tomorrow, Button. Yeah, see you in the morning, big guy. All right. Uh, bye, guys. Muggles and Joy fly to find Bitsy, who is catching some wave and a little bit of sun. Hey, Bitsy, how you doing? Hi, Muggles. What are you doing all the way out here? There's no algae anywhere. I ate it all. You lost? Nope, not lost. Joy and I came to find you. Me? What for? We hold a prayer worship gathering every other morning, and we'd like you to come. Prayer worship? What's that? It's a get-together for Jesus. We join together to give him thanks and praise. Then we go about our day more focused and with souls full of joy. Oh, is there algae? Yep, our reef's chock full of it. You can forage and pray till your heart's content. Button's coming. You two can float together and catch some air if you like. Hmm, okay. Sounds fun. Yay! Yay! Later that day, Muggles and Joy go to see Professor Shark, filling him in on their new recruits. Hey, Professor Shark. Hey, Professor Shark. Muggles, Joy, did you have a good time at service? We did, Professor. Button and Bitsy came with us, and they sat front and center praying the whole time. Yeah, they really enjoyed it. Oh, that's great, you two. And as we learn from the Bible's book of John, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. The Bible is so cool. We love reading and sharing Jesus' words and actions. And we already have a couple new sea creatures who we think will love to join us. Yeah, Boo Cakes and Scary Henry don't know what they're missing. <laughs> I'm sure you two will let them know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
their souls rich with prayer and hearts full of love for Jesus. Little Muggles and Joy swim out to forage another of God's bountiful seabeds. Time to algae up, Joy. Let's do it, Muggles. All right. Yahoo! It's another nice day in the sea. And all little fish, Muggles and Joy are swimming back to their reef to join the others for their morning worship. I can swim faster. Uh, no, I can swim faster. No, I can. No, I can. I said I can. Hey, get back here. Muggles and Joy are as worn out as an old fishing line, amusing Professor Shark to no end. <laughs> you two. <laughs> what have you been up to out there? I was busy swimming circles around slowly muggles here. <laughs> she was not. I left you in my bubbles, Slowpoke. Hey! Now, now, little one, calm down and let's get ready for morning worship service, shall we? Aw, but I want to keep playing in the open ocean. Besides, we worship yesterday. He wants to keep playing because he likes getting dorsal whooped by a girl. I don't know any girls who can whip my dorsal slow lane. Why don't you go find one? Muggles, joy! Why, why, it was amusing when you came back making all those bubbles like little underwater locomotives. But now this insolence is growing tiresome. Go clean yourselves up and join the rest of the reef for worship. Yes, yes Professor. Professor. Muggles and Joy arrive to join morning service, but there's only one coral shelf free. That coral shelf is mine. No, it's mine. I saw it before you did. Ladies first. Little fish, out, both of you. No service for you this morning. You two need to get your minds right. Go tame this selfishness and, and find out why it's a vice Jesus frowns upon. Be ready to explain yourselves when you return. Muggles and Joy run into their old friend Mr. Flips. Hey, fishes, how's it going? Meh. Meh? Oh, what's with the meh? Hey, shouldn't you guys be in morning service? Uh, I got an invitation delivered to my shoreline, but we just started holding our own services. Uh, I was thinking of attending yours tomorrow. That'd be great, Mr. Flips. There's an empty coral shelf waiting for you. We got kicked out. You what? What happened? You're two of the best fish that reef has. Professor Shark said we're selfish. He then threw us out! Oh no! This is horrible! We were just playing, but we got carried away. Yeah, we didn't mean to make such a scene, and at worship no less. I'll bet Jesus is not very happy with us right now. I wouldn't let us into heaven acting like we did either. Oh, come on guys, it can't be that bad. You still love Jesus, right? Yes! Well, then this is a fixable problem. Remember, he who repents is always forgiven. Always! Even he who disrupted morning service? Especially he who's disrupted morning service. Jesus sees all, and he forgives all too, if we're truly sorry. We are sorry, Mr. Flips, we really are. Whoa, did we blow it. Hey, why don't you two go see my girl Bitsy? She can lend some perspective on this issue. She knows the Bible like the back of her flipper, and the Bible's chock full of good lessons we can apply to our everyday lives. Okay. Good. Oh, well, head that away to the sunny Hula Bay. She'll see you before you see her. Just tell her Flip sent you. After a short swim, Muggles and Joy find themselves in Sunny Hula Bay. And here is Bitsy! Hi guys, how are you today? Hi Bitsy! Mr. Flip sent us! He said you might be able to help us! Help you? Of course! 
I'm always here to help little fish. What do you guys need help with? Well, we're a bit embarrassed to say. You can tell me, guys. How long have you known me? You've even invited me to your fish service, remember? I'm here for you if you need me. Oh, Bitsy, it's about fish service. It is? Yes. We were being rowdy and disrupted morning service at our church's coral reef. We just got carried away, and we were playing, and we couldn't stop arguing over who was better, then faster, then stronger, then smarter. Then we started fighting over the last coral shelf. I say ladies should be first. And I say first come, first serve. I say she who sees it first clams it. <laughs> Get it? Clams? And I say the bigger fish gets the worm. Hey, you're not bigger than me. Am too. Are not. Am too. Yikes, this is a problem. You guys need a good lesson from the Bible right away. Muggles, Joy... Are you too familiar with the Bible lessons on selfishness? Hmm, no. Well, allow me to fill you fish in. The Bible says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So you should always examine your hearts and lives to see if you are indeed following Jesus. Wow, I don't want to fail Jesus' test. How can we show Jesus we're sorry? That's easy. You just have to be sorry. Ask him for his divine forgiveness and he will forgive. How wonderful to have such a loving savior. Oh, we're sorry, Jesus. We promise to honor you from now on and we won't make the same mistake again. He hears you, Muggles. He's always listening and he's always there when you need him. Let's go tell Professor Shark that we're truly sorry and that we learned a valuable lesson. Yes, let's. Thanks, Bitsy. Be well, light guys. See you again soon. Muggles and Joy return to the reef to see Professor Shark and tell him all they've learned about the perils of sinful selfishness. Ah, uh, Muggles, Joy, have we learned to tame our selfish tendencies? We have, Professor Shark. We saw Mr. Flips and Bitsy, and Bitsy told us a Bible parable about selfishness and how it fails Jesus' test of our faith. We don't want to go down that path, Professor. We've learned our lesson. We asked Jesus for his divine forgiveness. Oh, which I'm sure he granted, Muggles. Jesus' eternal love is there for us whenever we need it, through good times and bad. Amen. How about a coral shelf front and center for tomorrow's worship service? We all missed you two terribly today and would love to have you back. Yay! With a heart full of gratitude and love, little muggles and joy strike out to live their day for God. In Jesus' name. Here we go, Joy. And we're both pretty fast muggles. Yes, we are. Neck and neck, I'd say. Woohoo! Yeah! It's a beautiful afternoon, and all little fish muggles and Joy have the day to themselves after a good week foraging algae on the seabed. We have the whole day to ourselves, Joy. What you want to do? I don't know, Muggles. So many choices. So much to see. The sea is, is so big. Should we go on another adventure and explore other open seas? Well, it's up to how fast our little fin can carry us. And that's far. We can make it to the other side of the world if we wanna. Let's race. <laughs> Muggles, wait, wait. Come on, Joy, keep up with me. We've never swam this far before. 
metaphor. What if we lose our strength? Here we go. A little further. Just a little. Let's swim till we can't swim anymore. Muggle, slow down! Oh no! Muggles and Joy have swam too far! And now they're lost! Where are we, Joy? I don't know! Do you recognize any of these corals? Or sponges? Or rocks? Um, I don't think so. I can't even see the corals, it's so dark. We swam too far from our reef! And now we're... Lost? Muggles! Joy! Scary Henry! But here comes the great friend Scary Henry! What are you baby fish doing all the way down here? This is deeper water than you're used to. Oh, uh, we swam too fast! And too far! And now we're lost. And scared! That's okay, guys. I was just about to head back to your reef. If you guys want to go that way... Yes! We do! Hang on, Joy. Are you sure we don't want to explore this new seabed? What if we find another sunken ship? This one with sea monsters? No way! Ha <laughs> ha! Joy might be right, Muggles. There's different sea life this deep in the ocean. Some of these creatures may not be friendly uh, to visitors. I'm scared already! Come on, Muggles! Let's go! No, we, we could... Let's go, Muggles! I don't want to be here another moment! Let's go back to our friendly reef! Oh, okay. Muggles and Joy swim alongside Scary Henry, the deep ocean fish, and he leads them back to their reef. There's not much to do out here except float around. The water's pretty good. No pollution. Not many predators. Everyone keeps pretty much to themselves. It's tranquil. I saw a jellyfish or two, but they're blind, so they don't even know you're there. Well, what was that? It sounded like some kind of sea monster. Ha <laughs> ha! There's no such thing as monsters, Muggles. Although God did bless the deep sea with lots of ghostly creatures that light up different magical colors. They are so cool, you guys. Just as long as we don't get too close. <laughs> Those guys are always hungry, I'm telling you. That's good to know. They only come out at night, right? Yeah, but down here, it's always nighttime, so stick with me. Oh, what was that? Oh, I'm scared, Muggles. Don't worry, guys. I'm here with you. I will never let anything happen to you. I promise. You would? You really would protect us, Scary Henry? Really? Of course, guys. I would do anything to make sure you're safe. You're my friends, and friends always help each other. Aw, thank you, Scary Henry. Yeah, Scary Henry, you're the best. Sure thing, guys. Hey, here we are, getting close to the ocean current that will take you back home. Just dive into the current and keep rising. When you can see the sunlight, you're back in your reef. Thank you, Scary Henry. Come visit us at our reef sometime. It's scary down here. <laughs> I will be safe. It's a long swim home, and Muggles and Joy's little fins are about as tired as they've ever been in all their weeks of life. Okay, so we're gonna discuss any spur of the moment decisions from now on. Right, Muggles? Right, Joy. Right. Ah! What was that? Oh, it's just me, guys, Mr. Flips. Mr. Flips, I'm so glad it's you. 
Yeah, and not a fish-eating carnivore. Or a sea monster. Or a giant squid. Okay, Muggles, no more. I'm too scared already. Oh, sorry, Joy. What brings you guys out to this part of the reef so late in the day? Bad decisions. Oh, oh whatever do you mean? Muggles swam too far and too fast, and we got lost. Well, I was looking for adventure. I wanted to see something new. Oh, sometimes desire. Fire is best tempered with wisdom, little ones. Journeys can be fun or dangerous, depending how prepared you are for the unexpected. Well, Mr. Flips, we weren't prepared at all. One minute we were enjoying our day, and the next, we're spinning down to the seafloor at breakneck speed. Our little fins got tired, and we fell too far. Ouch! Uh, now that's scary. Yeah, I'll admit it. I was scared, too. Me? Three. But then we met Scary Henry, who helped us find our way to the shallow waters. But we're still far from home. You know, little fish, our decisions are sometimes more important than we think. Oftentimes, an undesirable outcome can be traced directly back to one unwise decision. My point can be found right in the Bible, in the book of Matthew. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and not on the rock. Oh no, sand? That doesn't sound like a good idea. It's not. The Bible goes on to say, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So. If in doubt about what to do or which choices to make, we should turn to the Word of God to be our guiding light? Oh, that's the gist of it, Joy. His grace can be like a beacon in our lives, and faith in Him can render even the muddiest path crystal clear. I'm sold. Maybe the next time I get a wild urge to swim to the center of the earth, I'll think about it for a second, then ask Jesus for His take. <laughs> I think that's a marvelous idea, Muggles. So do I. <laughs> Let's go home. I second that. Get out of here, the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Muggles and Joy return safely to their reef, where Professor Shark has been waiting for them, worried sick about his missing baby fish. <sighs> oh, there you are. Where have you been, little fish? Do you know how late it is? I was about to dispatch Mrs. Woodley and Rosie to search the sea for you. Sorry, Professor Shark. It was all my fault. Don't be upset at Joy. That's not true, Professor. Muggles didn't make me do anything I didn't want to do. I made my own choices. And they weren't the best. I'm just glad you two are safe and sound and home in one piece. Where in the world did you swim off to? Well, we're not quite sure. We just swam and swam. And then we spin down and down. And down. Are you both all right? Yes, we're fine. Scary Henry and Mr. Flips helped us get home safe. But they weren't the only ones. Jesus helped us most of all. We learned a valuable lesson about making good decisions and the wisdom that we can all gain from a close relationship with our Savior, Jesus. Well, uh, I was going to read you to the riot act. I had a speech all prepared and everything, but uh, it sounds like you've already discovered the things I was going to try and tell you. You know, for two little fish who can be so mischievous at times, both of you sure are smart. With little hearts full of 
gratitude and love for Jesus. Muggles and Joy swim onward, ever toward a new surprising adventure. Here we go, Joy! The ocean is our oyster, Muggles! But let's stay close to the reef this time. Woohoo!